Hey everybody, Charlie Nair 2 here, and welcome back to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. We last left off, I think we're about to wrap this case up, but there's so many twists and turns, who knows? Let's continue on the case and see what happens. Van Dyke says, And yet, not one person made mention of such events in their testimony. Well, um, yes, that's true, but... Hold it! What do you gotta say, McGilded? Might a humble fella make a wee comment here? Mr. McGilded? To be sure now, the two fellows who were set on the roof that testified afore said nothing of the victim falling through the skylight. But it seems to me, my lord, that tis not so much a case of them not saying, but... A. Or I. Dramatic effect, I through hand. Tis a case of them being unable to say. What? I think perhaps the two fellas... Do be having something of a compelling reason not to mention what happened. Would you not agree, fine ladies and gentlemen of the jury? Hmm. Oh my. Oh my goodness. Surely not. Those two chaps on the roof? Oh, she is typing so fast. You mean the ones who stuck that knife in the man were... Ah! Just what exactly are you insinuating here, you blitherer? You rotter, he said. You rotter. What are you insinuating? Okay, this is a rather weird stance that you have got going on here first. This is a flaming outrage. I have a good mind to give you a blinker in a minute. I'm guessing it's a black eye. He'll give you a shiner in a minute, he said, and so will I. Okay, so you're just backing him up now. Mr. Fairplay. You're effectively accusing me, a city gentleman and well-respected banker. And me, a, a very angry hatter. Suggesting that someone like me could have stabbed that man in the guts. It's, it's, it's a disgrace. It's scandalous. It's arg. Man, please stop biting your cane like that. It makes me uncomfortable. I feel like you're going to break your teeth. I protest. I protest in the strongest possible terms. That's right. I protest, too, about you, you rotten scoundrel. Are you going to fight Mr. McGilded? Order, order, order. This is not the time, witnesses. I will not permit this wanton invasion of the stand. Return to the ante room, ante room at once. I'm used to hear an ante chamber, not ante room. But but this is beyond reason, my lord. Arg! It's outrageous. It's it's very hurtful, you know. My lord, if I may comment. Go ahead, Lord Van Zykes. It was the defense that incited this outburst from the witnesses. My learned friend has seen fit to abandon all protocol and accuse the witnesses without proof. Uh, accuse? I never intended to. Actually, we didn't accuse the witnesses of anything. Mr. McGilded did. It seems, young Nipponese, that your command of the English tongue is wanting. That could be taken in a few different ways. You proposed to this court that the victim fell through the skylight from the roof deck of the omnibus. That hypothesis cannot possibly stand without the rooftop passengers being aware of the events. No. He could have been killed and dumped through the skylight before they even got on the top of the roof. You have branded these gentlemen liars. You have intimate. Oh. 
intimated their criminal guilt. I thought that said intimidated. I was reading too fast. I love that point. This slow coin he's got. I'm going to start doing that. Just random people. Go up to him. Slowly point at him. I need a hallowed chalice as well, though. In our British courts of law, that is what is termed a baseless accusation. I know I was rash to put this idea forward without any actual evidence, but... You can't just dismiss it without a second thought. What are we wasting time for? Get them to... Testify. I thought there was something fishy about that hat from the moment I laid eyes on the fellow. We have to see this matter through now, one way or another. If there's filth and rubbish in our midst, we must dispose of it at once. Hey, voice acting! Well, what's happening, Mr. Naruhodo? The spectators in the public gallery are... They're in a complete frenzy. Mr. Fairplay and Mr. First. Um, my lord? You, you will take the stand again and make another formal testimony in reference to the indictment brought by the defense. Um, y yes, my lord. I didn't come here for this. There's no time to think this through. All I can do is keep pushing forward. Refuting the accusation. We were the only two people up on the roof deck, dead or alive, I can swear to that. If anything had happened where we were sitting, don't you think that one or the other would have noticed? In any case, neither of us know the first thing about the victim. We have no reason to kill the man. The skylight was shut the entire time, I tell you. We couldn't possibly have opened it. Yeah, you could have. I saw the latch. If you're so sure the victim fell through the skylight, where's your proof? Hmm. I must say that on listening to this testimony, it is somewhat hard to imagine. How either witness could have performed any malevolent act on this open rooftop deck without the other noticing forthwith? That's right, you see. We're innocent, I tell you. Although logically, of course, the argument falls down if the two of you were in collusion with one another. What? Eh. According to investigations by Scotland Yard... Oh, wait, I'm doing the wrong voice. Hold on. According to investigations by Scotland Yard... The two witnesses share no common dealings. Huh. Well, I don't trust coppers anymore, and I trust the stinking rich. Something doesn't feel right here. The trial is going in our favor, really. So why do I feel so uneasy? Counsel for the defense, over to you. Your cross-examination, please. Oh, yes, my lord. Refuting the accusation. We were the only two people up on that roof deck, dead or alive, I can swear to that. Let's press that. Hold it! So at no time did the victim, Mr. Mason, climb up to join you on the roof deck. Absolutely not. Dickin. Why did you say Dickin? Make sure I look at everybody else. No question about it, he said. None at all. Oh, but yes, of course. I remember seeing them both. I saw the victim inside the enclosed cabin talking with this man here. Is this true, Mr. McGilded? 
Dear me, my lord, at the risk of repeating myself, myself, I boarded the omnibus alone and nodded off inside almost immediately. That's an outright lie. Without a doubt, you were engaged in... Uh-oh. I might want to call on fair play. Let's do it. Excuse me. Mr. First, or first, not fair play. Oh, how can I help you, sir? That last statement, did it trouble you in some way? Oh, um, not particularly, sir, no. If anything, he's troubling me with that hat of his. Has he greased his head? Okay, he's saying the same hat thing. Mr. Naruhoto, even the witnesses can see what's going through your mind. You must really be more careful. Oh, I wish it were that simple. Oh, I need to not pursue them unless the little exclamation point comes up, right? All right, let's press this again. We'll skip the lines we've already read. Absolutely not. Dickon, no question about it. Oh, but yes, of course. I remember seeing them both. Saw the victim inside the enclosed cabin talking with this man here. Is that true, Mr. McGilded? He's gonna say, no, it's not true. That's an outright lie. Without a doubt, you were engaged in. Let me stop you there, fella, and ask, do you have any evidence at all? At all? Ah. It is all about evidence in the courts these days, so it is. You do well to remember that. All right, he's taking it back. Ah, I saw you with my own eyes. This is going so well. If anything had happened where we were sitting, don't you think one or the other of us would have noticed? Let's press that. Hold it! Well, it was on the final run of the omnibus at past 10 o'clock in the evening. It would certainly have been quite dark. Perhaps too dark to see clearly? Is this some kind of a lark? Is this some kind of a joke he said? Is that what this is? Or perhaps one or the other of you fell asleep briefly? Are you fair dinkum, sir? Does that mean dumb? Are you serious, sir? That's what he said. It's impossible, I tell you. I'd give you the keys to the vault if you could fall asleep in that bitter cold. And if you did manage it, your eyelids would freeze shut and you'd never open them again. That's extreme. It was extreme, I tell you, and we had to put up with it because this man had locked the door. I don't think he did. Any true gent would have unlocked it and led me in when I, when I knocked. I'm, I'm dreadfully sorry about that, young fellow. But you see, I was away with the fairies and I didn't hear you at all. It's a lie. I saw you through the glass. You were talking to someone. Now, now. It was a cold night, so it was. People do be seeing things that aren't real in the cold. It is hardly surprising. Seeing things? Seeing things? I believe we have reached an impasse here on this particular point. Ugh. You. 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 Don't take it personally now, lad. If I'm a suspect in this case, then tis only fair that you and the other fiend are too. Open to free competition is what a capitalist society is all about. This isn't a competition I should like to be involved in, really. I'm sorry about the cadence of that. In any case, neither of us know the first thing about the victim. We have no reason to kill the man. Now, that is not true because... Oh, yeah, the victim... Well, maybe to try to place the murder on Mr. McGilded here. Let's uh, press this. Hold it! So you had never met Mr. Thrice-Fired Mason before? Oh, Loom. Lume? No. Not once, never. He'd never met the man before, he said. Never. And you, Mr. First, had no prior dealings with the victim either? That's right, sir. Hatters don't have much to do with brick maker, Brick maser, Brick makers to be perfectly honest, sir. Why did I have such trouble saying that? No, I imagine not. You see, how many different ways can I put this? Neither of us have the remotest connection Ooh, to the gentlemen who were inside the cabin. 
Now that's not true because we do know that he owes him money. So let's go ahead and pursue this. Excuse me. Yeah, if I just look for the exclamation point, I don't have to keep looking at the people. Mr. McGilded? Yes, counsel. What can I be doing you for? Did the witness's last statement give you pause for thought somehow? Not the remotest connection? Is that right now, I wonder? Exclamation point. What are you insinuating now? Ah, Mr. Fairplay. It has been too long, so it has. Eh? If I'm not very much mistaken, I believe tis fast approaching, is it not? Your repayment date? I, I beg your pardon? We've already established you owe him money. <laughs> you borrowed 20 guineas from me, sir. At an unconscionable rate of interest. You tricked me. It's extortion. Well, now, is that a touch of begrudgery, is it? The sort of begrudgery that might motivate a fellow to pass his crimes off on another? Arg. He's biting the cane again. And young Mr. First. The me, sir? What do you want with me, sir? You do be making hats for a living, do you not? That there top hat sliding about on your head. Is that one of your own creations, is it? Oh, well, um, I'm still just an apprentice, you understand. I'm learning to find the perfect fit for whenever a fine gent walks through the door. Or for whenever a fine gent walks through the door. Hey, yeah, the perfect fit, is it? Well, tis a very distinctive design, so it is. Yeah, just like uh, thrice-fired mason wears. Many customers like it, I tell you. They like a distinctive touch. Customers. Such as Thrice Fired Mason? Ah! There is a photographic print of the victim submitted as evidence before, my lord. Hmm? Ah, oh. This, you mean? I can't help thinking that the poor fella's hat looks distinctly familiar, wouldn't you say? Um... Oh! That's... That's one of my hats. Hey, hey, hey. Or I. That it is. So it would seem the brickmaker was a customer of yours. The sort of customer I'd wager you could have... Had a wee quarrel with over the distinctiveness of the goods. Oh, no, sir. A absolutely not, sir. Well... There's really nothing more to add. It wouldn't be right to say that the two fellas here haven't the remotest connection with the victim to the victim, you see. Oh, he's bowing. I rest my case. You you little weasel. Arg He's better at this than I am. Gosh, Mr. McGilded has certainly been thorough in his research, hasn't he? Please, don't let me little interruption hold up the proceedings. The skylight was shut the entire time, I tell you. We couldn't possibly have opened it. Now, I know how to refute this, but first we're going to press it. Are you quite certain about that? The skylight was shut the entire time. I'm going to lose my block with you in a minute. He's going to lose his rag with you in a minute. That's what he said. No, he said block. Take a look for yourself. Go on. You see? It's shut fast now, just like it was on the night. So it is, of course. A fellow the size of Mr. Mason could likely break right through it still and all. What? Just looking at the size of the thing, you understand. Alright, now you hold on there a minute. Sir, the size of the thing means nothing. Not on its own. Let's consider the bigger picture here, shall we? Let's stop biting our cane, shall we? Yes, please. I hate that. Um. I, I was riding the omnibus on another occasion when, um. Well, I broke wind loudly. Shocked my, I shocked myself with it as it happens. Okay. This is an unexpected confession, Mr. First. 
Oh, I just mean to say, well, the point is, I tried to open the skylight, you see. But just my luck, I couldn't make it budge. The stench was terrible. Everyone was looking daggers at me, sir. I went as red as a rogue I did. Or maybe he said rouge. I think he had rouge on there. Are you expecting me to sentence you? Oh, no, no sir. The, the point is, the skylight can't be opened. I tried and tried when I was inside that cabin. Yeah, but you can open it from the outside. All right, let's talk to her. Excuse me. Do you have something to say about that, Miss Lestrade? Miss Lestrade. It opens. Huh? The skylight. That's what we're talking about, right? Uh-oh, she's gonna shoot gas at people. All them skylights open. Dead easy. More, more easily than you can load that weapon? That's a lie, I tell you. Otherwise, when I broke wind, I... I... You can't do it from inside, you mug. Oh. Look, a few weeks ago, I was up on the roof deck of one of them drags, and I had a great haul. I mean, I had purses coming out of me ears. Miss Lestrada, this is not the forum to be eulogizing on the subject of your criminal activities. Eulogizing, I like that. Well, anyway, I had a bit of a scare. When I lifted the last bloke's purse, he got wise to me. All four of them surrounded me, so I couldn't hop off the bus and leg it. So what I did was I used the skylight, open the catch, and jump right through. What? Yeah, the catch for them skylights is on the top side. That's why you can't open them from the bottom. The skylight opens from the roof deck? Bailiff! Climb up onto the roof of the omnibus at once and verify this witness's claims. And we see the latch right there. Oh, my hat. Oh, she gonna shoot people again. See? Order, order, order! So it appears that this street girl's statement is quite true. Don't call her a street girl. I don't believe it. The skylight opens. And from the roof deck. Mr. Naruhoto. This could be the clue we've been looking for. I think so. Well, counsel for the defense, please continue with your cross-examination. Yes, my lord. So the skylight opens. Perhaps I should inves investigate for myself. Will it let us interact with it now? If you're so sure the victim fell through the skylight, where's your proof? Before we press that, I do want to investigate this for myself. So we're going to go up top here. Whoop. Can we look at this now? So the skylight was fashioned shut before, but now the catch has been undone. We should be able to open it. Man, y'all couldn't see that catch. You can certainly see inside the carriage through this opening, that's for sure. Yes, and there's a lamp in the enclosed cabin. All right, this is what they said before. So let's go inside now that we've opened it. Yep. Come on, get in there. Yep, yep. Let's not talk about it, let's just go. Okay, now let's look up. Really? We can't look up at it now? There's blood on the skylight. Ah, you see that? Yes, it does open very wide, doesn't it? Wide enough to kick someone like you through, certainly, Mr. Nerohoto. Why someone like me? Ah, what? what is it? Look, just here. Look at this. That's, without question, it's blood. Why would there be a blood stain there? Surely, it can't be unrelated to the case, can it? Seen the crime, there's a blood stain visible on the frame of the skylight when it's open. Details have been updated. All right. So let's just go ahead and present this then, right? Yeah, present it. 
On the night in question, the victim was fatally stabbed in the stomach. And immediately afterwards, the victim's body was pushed through the skylight onto the cabin below. Into the cabin below, sorry. Those are the facts and the irrefutable proof. Remains clearly visible in the omnibus that stands before us today in this very courtroom. What? That's, that's utter humbug. Ah, you can't possibly have any evidence. So, my question with this is, clearly the, the carriage has been replaced, the omnibus, because when we first got into court and we checked under the seat, there was no, um, there were no tools and stuff under, there was a bunch of tools under the seat, rather, there was no space for someone to hide. And I think the blood stain on the floor wasn't there. And then when the smoke bomb went off, the carriage was changed out. There's blood on the floor. There was a space under the seat. And now we see that there's blood on the skylight. You can't possibly have any evidence. No, you can't. I, I mean, we didn't do it, I tell you. It's impossible. Irrefutable proof? Here, in this courtroom? Council, my lord, I believe everyone would appreciate a little clarification here, huh? Where exactly within the omnibus is this evidence to which you allude? Oh, we just gotta look around. You will point out what it is that proves the victim fell from the roof deck through the skylight. Okay, so we just gotta, like, look for the blood, right? So, like, right here? And present that with the R button. Got it. By Jupiter! Is is that blood? Arg! This blood stain proves two things. Firstly, when the incident occurred, the skylight of the omnibus was open. What? And secondly, the victim was already bleeding when he fell through the opening. Oh my! And so it follows that Mr. McGilded, who was inside the enclosed cabin himself at the time, cannot possibly be guilty of the crime. So they're all dumbfounded. Shouldn't that be all we have to present? Like, we don't have to prove somebody else's guilt here. We just have to prove our, our uh, defendant's innocence, right? Order, order, order. Hold it. Hold it. Hold up. Hey. But, 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 but. But the blood could have sprayed up there when the fellow was stabbed inside the cabin. And only found its way to that one particular spot on the skylight? Sure, and that would have been very convenient. Ah. And let's keep it in mind that the skylight catch can only be unfastened from the roof deck. I myself wouldn't have been able to open it now, would I? But, 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 there's no way to know for certain, is there? If the gent really fell through the skylight, I mean. Why don't you have a good look at the floor of the cabin between the two seats, Mr. First? It is all too plain, if you see. There's the aftermath that shows the poor fellow dropped from a fair height right there, so it is. What? No. But, but it can't be. It's, it's all... LIES! Now, I'm gonna go ahead and jump in here before these guys get prosecuted for this when actually McGilded actually did do it somehow. How much we want to bet our guy's actually guilty. And we're gonna get him off, but then we're gonna find out that he actually did it, and we're gonna feel like crap. My fellow jury members... I think we can all agree that this is clear proof of the defendant's innocence, can't we? I believe we can, yes sir. It's clear to me now where the filthy rubbish can be found in this courtroom. So the very... Th let me try to see if I can read this right. So they thought they could pull the wool over my eyes, did they? She is furiously typing. I won't tolerate any of the guild's carriages being sullied with blood. I won't tolerate it. Oh, ow, 
always knew that nice gentleman who gave us that delightful park couldn't have done such a thing. On three then, everyone. One, two, three. Objection! Of course, of course objection, right at three. Break another chalice. Break another chalice. All right, that's going to do it for this episode. Next episode, we're going to hear from Van Zykes, see what kind of drama he's going to bring and what his objection is to our unanimous not guilty decision. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy my content, please consider a like, a comment, and or a subscribe. Stay tuned for the next episode. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.